Okay. Uh, I thought actually, you know, after talking to my group for any point of time, I, you know, ended up getting a next friend. Like, you know, hello, yes, you know, yeah, everything's all right. Uh, my group is globe trotters, and with an average height of six feet two inches, you know, and I'm five feet six, so you can see. Uh, and uh, I have. I have made a complete ban on them to stand together at any place, you know, that's because they can be very, very intimidating. Um, however, they, you know, it's not only with their height, it's also their, I think, accomplishment uh, with their work, with the research that they have conducted, the interviews that they have done, and finally the presentation that you are going to see, they are going to be impressive as well. So, not only with their height and the presence, but also with their intellectual contribution. With that, I'm going to call my group, the Globetrotters, to come over here. And um, unlike Ed, I'm actually going to read their names. <laughs> <laughs> the presenters are going to be Dan, or Daniel Irelian, and um, Mark Hatfield. And other than that, we also have Patrick Biggerstaff, Kay Ahanonu, Terry Tram, Chris Woods, Matt Nathan, and the Latvian boy. Where is that? Where is he? He's in the right. Oh, he's in the right. Okay. <laughs> and the Latvian boy. Our Alex Lakas. With that. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, yes. So good evening, everybody. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, colleagues, and professors, thank you for taking the time this evening to listen to our research presentation, uh, which is going to be focused on mobile brand interaction in Southeast Asia. To accomplish this project, an amazing journey, took a unique recipe. It took nine teammates, took five countries, 27 interviews, and one monkey bite. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Terry Tran got bitten by <laughs> But seriously, why should we focus on mobile? What's so, what's so important about mobile? So mobile is now. Mobile really has become integrated in all of our lives. It's become kind of a dominant, dominant communication tool that we use to connect with others as well as the rest of the world. Mobile offers three avenues uh, that traditional marketing hasn't offered. First, we always have our devices with us. Um, so mobile is really an anytime, anywhere type of, of tool that allows uh, constant connection with consumers. Also, mobile uh, devices are highly customizable and they can accommodate different personalities. You can customize your device how you want. So mobile is also uh, has personalization. And lastly, mobile devices are location-based. So we're constantly checking in and letting people know where we are. This leads to our research question, which is how can companies successfully interact with consumers on mobile devices to generate brand equity? Mobile, a mobile technology uh, opens a channel to brand awareness, conversion, and engagement. Now in our research in, in Southeast Asia, we found that many companies uh, <coughs> didn't use mobile technology for brand awareness. They still were focusing on older, more traditional types of media. And the same with conversion, where these companies didn't really have a, kind of a checkout or a way to close out the transaction via mobile technology, so they couldn't close the loop. But one thing South, uh, Southeast Asian companies did do well was use mobile technology for engagement. And we'll touch on this a little bit later in the presentation. Our primary research for this project involved, um, revolved around interviews. So we set up interviews with various companies with whom mobile technology and interaction was important. This included advertising firms, uh, brands, of course, as well as telecom. We also just went out on the streets and really used our eyes. So we went out and we see, saw how the different um, people in each country were using different mobile devices, interacting with them. And then in our daily meetings, we would kind of consolidate those and see if we learned anything new. Now, mobile is a quickly evolving field and it's constantly changing. So for our secondary, secondary sources, we uh, used the recent news and journal articles as well as heavy, uh, heavily used uh, online resources as well. So some pre 
previous work has already been done in this area. Uh, the journal articles that we, we had used to set the base for our project didn't really encompass all of the mobile uh, interaction landscape, but they did touch on the various aspects, such as marketing, measurement, application, uh, and advertising. Also, the previous, uh, some previous work kind of just validated that mobile is a fast growing market and, and uh, the consumers are growing rapidly. This still left some questions unanswered and that are still evolving actually. So how, we wanted to ask and find out how companies in <coughs> South Asia and the US are keeping up with the mobile technology adoption that consumers are, are embracing. How do, how do they stay up to date? Also to take a look at the current trends and landscapes and see how those align to the strategies that are being currently implemented and the strategies that are in the future. Uh, and then also we wanted to take a look at campaigns and see what works not just in a particular locale, but across the whole Southeast, uh, Southeast Asia region um, altogether. So quickly touching on the, the mobile consumer demographics of the area, uh, one thing that jumped out of this was that each country we investigated, including the US, had a mobile penetration rate of over 100%. And what that means is that there's mo more mobile phones in each country than there are people. Now mobile growth in, in Southeast Asia has started to slow. It boomed during the 2000s, but recently it stabilized at about 9% annual growth. Now this stabilization has had an interesting effect where people are now starting to uh, acquire <coughs> smartphones. They're starting to trade in their normal feature, feature phones and upgrade into smartphones because now the market's simply saturated with regular phones. Smartphone penetration in Southeast Asia is about 40%, and smartphone penetration in the, in the US is at about 60% right now. Infrastructure and government also play a role in mobile technology. Uh, and so just to, emphasize, just to show some parts of the infrastructure, uh, we show that every country we investigated was 3G ready, um, and almost all were 4G ready. And the ones that weren't 4G ready were had it on the roadmap for the near future. And a lot of spend is going into infrastructure in these different areas. And just another quick highlight is government involvement. Uh, so we saw government involvement ranging from policy or setting mobile penetration goals and mobile acquisition goals, all the way to com countries like Vietnam where the government actually owns the two largest competing telecom firms. Uh, so now that we have kind of a basic understanding of the research question and the landscape, we turn it over to Mark, who will help us uh, understand kind of the answers to these questions and um, the outcome of our, of our research. Thank you, Daniel. We'd next like, like to look at some of the ways that brands are utilizing uh, their social, social strategy. And one of the ways is social media. And social media makes a lot of sense for brands to invest in for a couple reasons. One, even more so than the US, a mobile phone is incredibly important to a Southeast Asian consumer. Uh, and the reason for this is that they might not have a laptop or a desktop or a tablet to engage with their friends and family, and mobile is really the way that they're doing that. And as we saw going around Southeast Asia, you'd have folks on a motorbike juggling a baby in one hand, a bag of groceries in the other hand, and their mobile phone. So it's, it's really that key for them. And secondly, it's, it's also important to know that social media strategies are very cost effective, and many brands in Southeast Asia don't have much of a marketing budget, and they haven't dedicated that budget, that budget to mobile, so it makes sense to invest in social media. The social networks that we saw performing well in Southeast Asia are very similar to the US. Facebook, Instagram, far away the leaders, and Twitter also has a strong following. We found it interesting that some brands have totally bypassed creating their own website entirely and have focused their attention on building out their, for example, Facebook page. And one of the reasons for that is that consumers in Southeast Asia are very comfortable operating entirely in these social networks. So for example, in the US, where we go to Google for search, they would just actually go to Facebook for search. So it makes sense for brands to invest there. We also learned about a couple of chat applications that have really gained traction over the last couple of years. Specifically Line, who in the last 18 months has over 100 million users. And they've rolled out a program where uh, brands can share these icons or images with consumers, and consumers share them with their friends. It's a way for them to identify th with themselves. And then brands have the ability to engage with these consumers for a 60-day period. So it's very useful for brand interaction. Another strategy that many brands are utilizing is apps. And every brand that we talked to had apps and were excited about their apps, but it was never totally clear what their strategy was. 
And it was clear that agencies haven't done a good job of explaining to brands the value of a, a well-performing app. And what we found in our research in the US and also Southeast Asia is that the apps that perform well are those that provide some sort of educational utility. For example, in Vietnam, Nestle rolled out an energy calculator app that enables parents to understand how much food their kids need to intake in order to exert a certain amount of energy throughout the day. So the target market for Nestle is, was parents, and, and this app worked really well to engage with them. We also saw push notifications in, within apps to a common strategy. So Megastar is a, a theater chain in Vietnam, and they roll out push notifications for deals on, uh, on uh, premieres, show times, and it's a way for them to engage with their audience. But unfortunately, on a, on a general basis, SMS was one of the most common strategies that we saw across Southeast Asian brands. So just mass text, me text messaging to a wide group of consumers. And we know that for mobile to work well, it has to be the right message at the right time to the right user. Unfortunately, SMS is, is really viewed as spam, so it's the wrong message at the wrong time to the wrong user. So that's an area that we can see Southeast Asian brands improving in the future. Pre-trip, we were expecting that the U.S. would be the leader in uh, mobile <laughs> interaction, followed by Singapore, Thailand, Malaysia, and Vietnam in that order. And what we found is that yes, the U.S. is far and away the leader. Southeast Asia is the leader in, in uh, or Singapore is the leader in Southeast Asia. And generally, the other three countries are on the same level as far as their brand uh, strategy. So it's important to note here that there is a big gap. Consumers have clearly embraced mobile. They're engaged with mobile. They're, it's very important to them. Brands, on the other hand, have not made that same jump. They're a few years behind. So it's important for brands looking forward to start rolling out some more forward-thinking strategies. Now, one of the reasons they haven't invested in mobile as heavily as they probably should is because of a measurement challenge. Uh, traditional media has metrics in place for measurement when you think about TV and print and uh, outdoor. And these metrics, whether or not they're actually accurate, they give brands comfort knowing that their investment is going to generate a return. Whereas mobile is really an unproven new platform, and when you compare it directly with web, there's fewer measurement metrics available on mobile. And thus, and actually one of the reasons for that is the cookies challenge. So on mobile, you're not able to track users via cookies as you are on web. So what's happening is you're not able to set a targeting and retargeting strategy on mobile, you're not able to close the loops, you're not sure if a user saw an ad and actually went and made a transaction on the mobile site. And this has developed risk-adverse advertising in Southeast Asia, where brands are basically saying, if we don't have measuring me metrics in place, it's not worth the risk to try to invest this money in mobile when we have our traditional advertising already set up. Looking forward, the future of mobile is very bright, and specifically for brand interaction in Southeast Asia is very bright. Uh, a couple of areas to point out that we see coming up in the future, we think the measurement issue will get solved in the next few years. We think there will be a way to cookie users and, and track users that'll help shift some of the budget to mobile. We're also expecting to see more location-based services rolling out in Southeast Asia, as we see in the US. And then also rich media with videos. Uh, it's more of an immers immersive experience, and we, we see rich media taking over for traditional banner advertising on mobile. So our contribution to the, to the, the overall field of mobile brand interaction is, you know, it's, it, we've noted that it's, it's very green in Southeast Asia. It's constantly evolving. Uh, we've noted that there's a big gap, and there's a, that means there's a big opportunity for brands to step into the space. There's a big measurement challenge, so hopefully brands, if they're looking at developing strategies in Southeast Asia, can use some of our research to understand what the current landscape is, what brands have been doing, and really what they should be doing based on where consumers are. Looking at the future, there's a couple areas that we would love to see uh, studies rolled out in. So one is doing some sort of qualitative survey to, to customers to really get a sense of what they're looking for from, a brand, from brands in the mobile space. We'd also love to, we would have loved to have more interviews with, uh, with government agencies because we know that the policies and the laws that governments set have such a huge impact on the mobile landscape. And also looking at a year from now to see if the measurement piece has been, has been solved. So in conclusion, there's, mobile is really a, uh, a mobile, mobile channel is too big to ignore, and although there's a current, there's currently a gap, we see more strategies rolling out in the future uh, in Southeast Asia. Thank you.